We continue now at the top of Daf Samech Zayin Amad Aleph and Maseches Bab Metziah. This is Bab Metziah Daf sixty seven A. The Gemara continues. Rava says, "Have a Yisivna Kamei the Rav Nachman." I was sitting before Rav Nachman. Rashi explains, "Have a Yisivna Kiyamaru Modina Di Shamed Viachal Vachulu." This is Rav Nachman from the previous Amud when Rav Nachman was saying that Mechila Betos is considered to be Mechila if you forgive money by mistake. It's considered to be forgiven. So Rava says, "I was sitting before Rav Nachman when he said that." I wanted to ask him a question from Onah, and then he understood that what I was going to ask, and he brought me a proof from the case of an islandess. Rashi explains, because we learned in the Mishnah earlier, when you have a case of exploitation, you have to return the money. Let's say the seller overcharges the buyer, he has to return the money. Now, even though the, the buyer gave the money intentionally, but since there was a mistake, you have to return it. You see that if a person forgives money by mistake, it's not considered forgiveness. Viodik means he He understood that I was going to ask a question on him, and so Chazes an islandist. So he showed me the case of islandist, meaning Kidmani laharosi taimulidvarav may islandist kidalakamon. He showed me a proof for his words from the case of islandist, as we will see. And the Gemara continues and explains Vahareona, you have the case of Ona, the Mechila Betosi. Again, this is a situation where the person forgave the money by mistake. Velohava Mechila, and apparently it's not considered to be forgiveness, because again we see that the Ona has to be returned. Viodik Chazes an Islandis, and then he showed me the case of Islandis. What's the case of Islandis? Hare Islandis de Mechila Betos. So you have a case of Islandis, which is a case of Mechila Betos, forgiveness of money by mistake. Vahava Mechila, and it's considered to be Mechila de Tanan, as we learn in a Mishnah, Hamema Enes, Vahashni. Of Ha'ilanis, the Mamaenes, Shni, and Ha'ilanis will see Rashi in a moment. Ain Lahen lo Ksuba, they do not get Ksuba. Velo Peros, they don't get the Peros. Velo Mizonos, they don't get the support. They don't get Mizonos. Velo Belos, they don't get the garments. All of this will be explained in Rashi. And so you see from here that Mechila Betos is considered to be Mechila. Rashi explains. A mima enes is ketani yesoma. A mima enes is a girl that is a minor who doesn't have a father. She siyasa ima ledaita. And so the mother's the one that married her off. That's essentially a derabonon kiddushin. Amru chachamim yecholo lemain. The chachamim say that she's allowed to refuse the marriage. To min hatora ain maisa ketana klum. Because on a do raisa level, what the minor did is nothing. The ima ain a zocha ba lekacha. And the mother doesn't have the ability to give her away in kiddushin on a do raisa level. The Rabbanon who the Tikkun is soon liyasoma. Now the Rabbanon said that there's a concept of marriage by yasoma shelo yin haguba minag hefker. That way people won't treat her like hefker, like nothing. V'yishmeren abala. That way your husband will protect her. V'heim amru. And they also said the sagi lo and that she can refuse the marriage. That is sufficient. That's a situation of a mima enes. And so then it said, Ein lo ksuba. There's no halach of ksuba. What that means is, V'yaf ma shechnis alo binadu naisa. Now even that which she brought in, let's say a woman brings into the marriage a certain amount of property, and then v'shamasen b'ksuba. So what they do is they write that property into the ksuba as an obligation. It's like a fixed amount. They value the property. They say it's worth whatever it's worth. And it's going to be written into the ksuba, and she's not going to be entitled even to that part of the even to that part of the ksuba. And certainly, she's not going to get the basic two hundred. Uh, that's talking about the two hundred by a ksuba that a woman gets. Misham debal And the reason for this is the reason why she's not entitled to the ksuba is because she's living against his will. She's a mama enes. She's essentially refusing the marriage. And then the Mishnah had the case of a Shnia. What that refers to says Rashi, Shniyos la Arayas. That refers to secondary cases of Arayas. These are forbidden relationships on a Durabonan level. Shagazru Chacham Beperakshani the Yavamas, the Chacham made a Gezer in the second Perak of Yavamas, ain't look suba. That these kinds of relationships, she doesn't get a Ksuba. The Knossahud, the Kansina, it's like a fine against her. Mimnesha Margi Loso, Allah, Kedamin, and Biyavamas. The idea again is, is that this is a fine against her because otherwise she's going to try to incite these kinds of relationships. The islandess, and then the next case of the Mishnah was the case of the islandess, the Chronisa de Loyalda, that's a woman that's not able to give birth, Lashon Ayol, Ein lo Ksuba, she doesn't have a Ksuba, Shem Mekchotos, that's considered a Mekachtos, it's like a mistaken purchase. The Lava died to the Hachinas, but he didn't marry her thinking that she was not going to have children. And Rashi continues, and this is the important point, even though when she forgives over the dowry that she brings into the marriage, 
Lamosra Biyado to give it to him, Taos Havai, that's really a mistake. She doesn't understand the fact that she's not going to be receiving any Ksuba. Mechila Bitaos, have a Mechila, but a Mechila by mistake is considered to be a Mechila, and she therefore has effectively forgiven over that money. And then the Mishnah said, Velo Peros, these particular women are not entitled to Peros, means to say, Nechasim Shenaflu La Birusha Achar Shenisis, let's say you have property that she inherits after she's married. Tiknu Chachamim Shahabalo Chel Peros, the Chachamim say that the husband gets the Peros, Velo Tiknu Tachtein, and in exchange for the Peros, so she gets Shem Nishbitz Chayiv Lifdosa Mishalo, that if she's captured, so he has to redeem her from his property. So that's the idea, she doesn't get that. Vielo Afal Pisha Ein Lahem Takonis Peros, Shem Nishbitz Lo now, even though these women, if they do get captured, so he doesn't have to redeem her, they don't have the taikonas peros, to lo karina bava osvinach leintu, we don't call it vosvinach leintu, it's not considered to be a regular relationship of a wife. Afiluachi, nevertheless, lekesheteitse, when she does leave the marriage, lo yachzer la peroshachl, he does not have to return the peros that he ate, he is entitled to the peros, that's what it means velo peros, even though she's not getting what is in exchange for the peros, she does not get the peros, and then also velo below, she doesn't get the garments, means hechnisalo begadim benedunaisa. Again, let's say she brings garments in as part of the dowry, as part of what she brings into the marriage. Afilu yesh mehem kayam, even if some of them are still around, lo yachs below, saying those don't get returned. Alma mechilas achilas peros, you see that the mechilo, the forgiveness of the achilas peros, afal pisha betos machlolo, even though she forgave that by mistake, mechilahi, that's considered to be forgiveness. And the Gemara continues, Velohi, but it's not really true. Lo Ona have it tiyufte, velo islandis messiahly. The case of Ona is not a refutation in terms of Mechila Betos, and the case of Islandis is not a support in terms of Mechila Betos. And the Gemara explains, Lo Ona tiyufte, the case of Ona is not a refutation. De lo yada de ise Ona, because the person is not even aware that there was Ona, de machel gabe, that he should forgive it, meaning to say, it's not even a situation of Mechila Betos. He can't prove from that that Mechila Betos is not a Mechila, because the person is so not even aware that he wasn't even mochel. Velo Islandis Messiah, in the case of Islandis, is not a, su- a support for the idea that Mechila Betos is a Mechila. De nichola, de tepek Allah, shma de ishas, because really the woman prefers that she should have a name that she was a married woman, and so therefore, essentially, in that case, it's not even considered to be a mechila bitos. And Rashi explains the lo yada shenesana. The person doesn't even know that he was exploited. The lechol that that he, that he should have been mochel. Helkach ein kan mechila vafila bitos. You don't even have a mechila at all. Not even a mechila bitos. And the nichol le the nepaka lo kolashma the isha. She wants to be called a married woman. The afilu yada shein nisu en nisu. And even if she knows the marriage is not a marriage, ritzona la achilo. She wants to give him that produce. And so therefore, in that case as well, it's not a mechila bitos. And the Gemara continues, There was a woman who said to a certain person, essentially to a shliach, I go by land from my relative on my behalf. So the shliach went and he bought her the land. And the seller said to the shliach, If I get money, is she going to return it to me? So the shliach said back to the seller, You and her, you are relatives, so you'll work it out yourself. Amar Rabba Baravuna, Rabba Baravuna says, Kol atun of Allahachi, Amar Sam Chadaite Vilogamro Makni. Anytime a person makes a comment like that and says, You and she are relatives, you'll work it out. So the person really is assuming he's relying on the fact he will be able to get the property back and he's giving it away with that understanding. And so the Gemara says, Arahadra, the Gemara says, Indeed, the land will return to him. But Pirimai, but what's the Allah in terms of the produce? Let's see, she, let's say she consumes the produce in the interim, does she have to give, back, does she have to give that back? Ribis kitsut zahave v'yotze b'dayonin. On the one end, we can say that it's fixed interest and it should be taken away by the judges. She does have to give it back. O dilmar maybe ki avak ribis have. Maybe that's considered to be a case of avak ribis. It's just a hint of ribis v'ein yotzen and it doesn't go out b'dayonim. The judges don't take it away and so therefore she's able to keep the produce. Again, this is a situation of ribis because essentially she gave him money and then he gave her the land. When he gives the money back, he gets the land back. So that's a straight... Uh, a straight situation of a loan where she lent him money, but the produce which she is not giving back, that's the part of the collateral, so to speak, that she's not giving back, that should be ribis. And so the question over here, is that ribis kitsutsa, or is that avak ribis? And the Gemara says, Amar Rav Baravuna, Rav Baravuna says, Mistabra ki avak ribis hava ve'in yotzen b'dayonin. It makes sense to say that it's just a hint of ribis and the judges don't take it away from her. The Chayin Amar Rav, and similarly Rav says, ki avak ribis hava ve'in yotzen b'dayonin. It's considered like avak ribis, and the judges will not take it from her. 
And the Gemara continues, Amar le Abaye le Rabba, Abaye said to Rabba, Mashkan tamai, what if you have the same situation, but it's not really a case of a sale? It's a case of an actual collateral, meaning to say the lender takes collateral, and then that collateral is land, he takes produce from the collateral. So in that situation, he's going to have to return the land when he gets back the money. Does he have to return the produce? Is that a problem of ribis? Hasam time amai, Mishum delocates le. On the one end, you can say that over there, in the case of the woman and her agent, so since it's not a fixed amount, it's considered avak ribis. And so then Hachanami locates Lehi. Here also it's not a fixed amount, and therefore it's Avak Ribis, and the produce would not have to be returned. Odilmer maybe will say, Hasam Zvinei Hachalva, that over there it actually was a sale, meaning to say it was set up as a sale in the first place, and that's why you don't have to return the produce, but when it comes to a case of a mashkon, of an actual collateral on a loan, that starts out as a loan, that could be more problematic, and you do have to return the produce. And the Gemara says, Amar Lehi said back to him, Hasam time amai mishum delocates lay There the actual reason is because it's not a fixed amount. Hachanami locates lay Here also it's not a fixed amount and therefore it is not ribis that has to be returned. It's considered to be avak ribis. And the Gemara continues, Amar of Papi, Rapapi said, Avad Ravino uvdo v'choshe v'yapik piri Ravina. He ruled on a case that the produce does have to be taken away in such a situation. Deloka Rabba Ravuna, that was not like Rabba Ravuna. He again said that the ribis in this case does need to be returned. And the Gemara continues, Amar mar bereid Rav Yosef mishmei derava, mar the son of Rav Yosef, said in the name of Rava, Hamashkanta, when you have collateral, ba'asra de mesalki, in a place where the borrower is able to get the land back if he pays the money back. So then the halach is, achal shir zuzei misalkin and If the person ate, meaning to say he consumed produce at the amount of the loan, then we take him away from the property. But achal tfei, but let's say he ate more produce than that, so lo mafkin and minei, that we won't take away from him. And similarly, velo mechashvin and mishtar l'shtar, we're not going to calculate it from one star to another star, meaning we won't count that towards another debt. And Rashi explains, be asked the Masalki in a place where they remove the land from the person if the borrower pays the debt. It means, it's a place where they lend money, and when they lend the money and the lender takes the collateral, he does consume the payros. And he does not deduct anything as he's consuming the payros. As we'll say later on. And the custom in this particular place is, we remove the mal. We remove the lender from the property once the borrower has money and pays back the loan. And so Rashi continues, the Gemara said, Achal Kashir Zuzi, in such a place, if the lender consumed produce at the value of the loan, Kafi Mashin Im Karna Peros Beshuk, meaning we're going to evaluate what the Peros are worth based on how they'll sell in the marketplace. And then at this point in time, the borrower comes to us, Vitava Viyamar, and he claims and he says, Any roads are Shiocha Peros Beribis. I don't want you to eat more of my produce. Now that's going to be interest. So then Yashumu Peros Shachal, what happens is, is we evaluate the produce that he did eat, Vietlam. And that counts as collection of the debts. If I had money, so would I not be able to remove you from the property? Of course he would. So too, the payros, the produce that you consumed, that is my money. And therefore, essentially, the debt has been paid off. And Rashi continues, Mesalkinon lay again, we remove him from the property if he's consumed produce at the value of the loan. Now, even though if he would continue to consume produce, that would just be a hint of ribis, it would be avak ribis. And we wouldn't take it away from him. The judges wouldn't take that away. But Hani Mili Levos or the Shakli, that's talking about after he, after he already consumes the avak ribis. Once he takes the avak ribis, it's not taken away from him. But here you have a borrower who was quick. He only allowed him to consume produce up to the value of the principal, up to the value of the debt that was owed. And so therefore, at that point in time, we would remove him. However, but let's say the lender, he consumes more produce than the value of the loan. We don't take that away from him. Because again, as we just said, that's avak ribis. It's not taken away by the judges. And furthermore, we don't count from one debt debt to another debt, meaning to say, let's say this borrower owes him money from a different debt for a different star. We don't say that the extra produce that the lender ate, that the lender consumed, that should count towards the other debt as if the borrower is paying off that other debt. Because that would be the equivalent of taking away avak ribis from him, which you're not allowed to do. That would be taking away what he already consumed, and that we do not do. 
And we will take a look as well at Rashi further on. Rashi addresses this case. That which we were talking about before, which is our case, Asra de Masalki, we're talking about an area, a location where they remove the lender from the property when the borrower is able to pay. That's the Ilu Asra de Lomasalki, because let's say it wasn't a place like that. Let's say the custom in this particular place was we don't remove the lender. And in such a place, there are places where the custom is that the lender keeps the collateral for a certain set number of years, according to whatever the custom is in that place. And in places like that, when the borrower has money, he's not able to get the lender off the property. It's a set amount of time that the lender has on the property. So in that situation, everybody agrees in that situation, that all the years that the lender's on the property, it really is like a sale. The money that he gave to the borrower is essentially like he's purchasing the right to that land for that amount of time. And even if he consumes, uh, meaning the produce from the field that he consumes is the value of the money he gave, lo we would not remove him from the property. And the Gemara continues, now let's say the borrower died, and so now we have the orphans of the borrower, the lender is sitting on the orphan's property and consuming produce, so then if he consumes the value of the amount of money, we remove him from the property, even if he consumes more than the value, we would actually take away from him any extra that he consumed, and we would count it from one star to another, meaning we would count that if he consumed extra produce, we would count that towards another debt to a assume essentially that they were paying off that second debt. Rashi explains, If this field belonged to orphans, so then we would even take it away from the lender if he ate more. And the reason for that is, because the Bez in the court in the city, Avi and Shal Yisomim, is considered like the fathers of the Yisomim, the Harayim Shlitim Lasos Mishpat, and they're able to execute judgment. The Haim Lo Machlo Ala Odev Shachal, and they're not forgiving the extra that he's consuming. The Havale Commander Salku Mishaita Dachal Shir Zuzi. It's as if they removed him the moment that he consumed the amount of the money that was given. And the Gemara continues with an alternate opinion. Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says, Hashta Diamar Dachal Tfei Lo Mafkina Mine. Now that we're saying if the lender consumes more produce than the value, Value of the amount of money that was given, we don't take that away from him. So actually, Achal Shirzuze Nami, even if he consumes exactly the value of the money that was given, Loma Salkinale, we're not going to take him from the property below Zuze. If the Lova, if the borrower doesn't actually pay back the debt with money, meaning the borrower actually has to pay back, we don't simply say that the produce is considered paying back the loan. My time, what's the reason? Saluke below Zuze, because if you're going to remove him without having the Lova pay any money, Afuke Minehu, that's like taking it away from him. And how but remember, this is considered like avak ribis. It's just a hint of ribis. The avak ribis ain't a yotze bedayon, and you don't take away avak ribis with judges, and so therefore there's no reason to take it away from him if the love is not actually paying back the debt. And Rashi explains, Lo misalkin and lay below Zuzi, we do not remove him from the property if the borrower doesn't pay back money. So the borrower has to pay back the entire loan. The idea is, since when he's consuming this produce, he's not consuming it as a way of the borrower paying back the debt. So Havale Avak Ribis, it's actually considered Avak Ribis, Mishasachila from the moment he consumes it. It's Avak Ribis all along. That's what Ravashi is saying. The Aina Yotzabedayon, and Avak Ribis is not taken away by the judges. If you're going to remove him from this field without the borrower having to pay, that's considered taking away the avak ribis, which of course we don't do. And so that's why Ravashi says, even if it's at the level of the amount of money, we do not remove him from the property. And the Gemara continues, Avad Ravashi Uvda Biyasomim Ketanim Ravashi. He ruled in a case when it was a case of orphans who were minors. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Dafsamach Zayin Amid Beis.